us, mighty God. I give God thanks once again. I greet you all in the matchless, wonderful, exalted name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I give honor to that Spirit of God who is my helper. Without him, don't know where I'd be. Hallelujah. We're so blind, we're so ignorant, we're so powerless without him. He is our helper. He called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldean and told them, I will bless thee. I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. I am your helper. Uh, the world we live in is marred and upside down and in need of help. But we have a helper in Christ. Hallelujah. We have a helper. We don't need to walk around moping. We don't need to hang our heads. All we need to do is lift up our head unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Hallelujah. He then went on to uh, offer the same promise to Jacob and to Isaac and then Joseph. He told jo Joseph, he empowered him to interpret dreams in so much that Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, can there be such a man as this in whom the Spirit of God dwells? In whom the Spirit of God dwells? We have a helper. I want everybody to say this morning, we have a helper. Stand up on your feet and say, we, I have a helper. I have a helper. He's a helper to the fatherless. He's a helper to the widow. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Lift up your head and say, I have a helper. God bless you in Jesus' name. Look at somebody and tell them in a time like this when hell is set loose. So the kingdom of God still stands. Look at somebody else and tell them in a time like this when hell is set loose. So the kingdom of God still stands. How many believe the kingdom still stands? Shout a big hallelujah. Shout a big thank you Jesus kingdom of God still stands. To the book of Judges, to the book of Judges, to the book of Judges, chapter 11, Judges, chapter 11, as the Spirit of the Lord leads, amen. When you found it, say amen. Judges, 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 if you're at Jude, Lord, you're in the wrong place. You've got to go far left, the book of Judges, the book of Judges. Chapter 11. Ask somebody, are you there yet? If you are, shout amen. Lord, you are still there. I'll read. I can't read. Are you there yet? Say amen. Just fake it until you make it. Say amen. All right. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor. And he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up. And they thrusted out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for you are the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tod. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tod. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain that we might fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me and expel me out of your my father's house and why art ye come unto me now when you are in distress <laughs> and the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah therefore 
we turn again to thee now that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not according to thy word. Then Jephthah went with the elders of the Gilead and the people made him head of the captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. If the Lord will just breathe upon me, I'd like to speak what he gave me. Just look at your body in the eyes with all sincerity but humility and tell them when I come out. Look at somebody else and tell them when I come out. Come on, say when I come out. Great God of Zion, Father of peace, our hope, our joy, and our stay, Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made in it. We shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad, Lord. You have made a way out of no way. And Father, we cannot do it without you. We have tried so many tactics and strategies. But every tactic and every strategy that we have tried have failed. Right now, Lord, we need your divine intervention and guide to keep us, to humble us, and to lead us all the way through to you. Have thine own way in this place. We know how Satan wants to destroy us, but the blood of Jesus is against the devil and his enemy. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, that you'll cover us, you'll guide us, you'll teach us, you lift us up out of, oh God, the valleys of iniquity, the valleys of brokenness, the valleys of sadness, the valleys of Lodabar. God, you pull us up. You give us a joy. You give us a peace. You put a pep in our step. You lift up our hands, lift up our heads. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you make this day the day of anointing of joy, anointing of gladness upon the people. Lord, start with me, the preacher. God, I, I'm here to preach your word, but I, I can't do it without you. But if you just intervene, for natural minds cannot understand spiritual things. But Lord, if you just move, if you just work, if you just take control, if you just speak, Lord God, if you just use and direct and let the flow be upon us, we'll have deliverance today. Have thine own way. We glorify you. Now we honor you. We give you every praise, Father, while you're here and while you're ready. Get rid of that old dragon. Smite the devil. Send him to shame on the pit of hell. Let your people, God, have deliverance and freedom to praise you today. Lead and guide and take full control. We glorify you now. We honor you. We give you every praise. Somebody who believe God with me, shout in Jesus' name. Come on, open up your mouth and shout in Jesus' name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the household of faith, my Father's children. I greet you in none other name but the matchless and the magnanimous name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To our first lady, Lady Artuso, come on. Give God praise for her. I don't like that. Even give God praise for her more vehemently. To our evangelists, amen. Wilson and Forsyth, give God praise for them. Amen. To our ministers, amen. And our missionaries, and you the people of God. And to all our brethren who are not here today, we give God praise for you. Amen. It was Woman's Day, amen. And surely the ladies got busy today praising God, didn't y'all? Didn't you? <laughs> Did you praise God with everything you had? kind of sad but I praise God for you I help you to praise you. Amen. the Lord put a word in my mouth Amen
And I just want to give you what God has placed inside of my spirit. When I come out, when I come out, when I come out, and just as a preview, you can add anything to the end of the story of how God delivers you. When I come out, I shall be as gold. When I come out, I shall be a victim. When I come out, Lord, tell somebody when I come out, I shall be filled with joy, unspeakable, full of, when I come out, somebody, Lord, I'm over myself. When I come out, Jephthah, and in the Hebrew, it's Yefta was a judge who presided over Israel for a period of six years. Jude chapter, uh, Judges chapter 12 and 7 declares it that he presided over Israel for 12 years. And according to the book of Judges, he lived in Gilead. His father's name was also Gilead. And his mother was described as a prostitute, a harlot, a whore. This may kind of indicate that Jephthah was a man of influence, a leader, so to speak, in his town or the city of Gilead. Not only was his name upon it, but he would seem to have the resources to frequent prostitutes. The writer of Judges was prolific in his presentation in that he didn't simply tell the story of Jephthah. But in doing so, he used a literary genre called characterization to introduce his main character. So he didn't write haphazardly. He was using a method to present his character. And characterization, just to give you clarity, is a literary device that is used step by step in literature to highlight and explain the details about a character in a story. It is in the initial stage in which the writer introduces the character with notable emergence. After introducing the character, the writer often talks about his behavior, than the progression of his story. So the writer used this characterization because the writer now is going to present you a character that the writer feels that you need to be engaged from the very outset of his writing. The judge's writer introduced Jephthah at, a, at the very outset in a rather peculiar way. So the word outset means at the very beginning of the writing, he, he introduces Jephthah in, in a very, very intriguing and peculiar way. He says of Jephthah from the very beginning, he said that he's a Gileadite. He wants you to know, he wanted you to know that he is from Gilead. He wanted you to know that Gilead is his home. He didn't want you to get it twisted. Not because you will read something later badly about Jephthah that you may disenfranchise him or remove him from where he should be. A lot of times people want to remove you from where you should be. Where your birthright is. So the writer didn't want you to disenfranchise him. He didn't want you to displace him. He said he is a Gileadite. A man of valor. <laughs> so he's not only a Gileadite. He's a strong man. He's not a weakling. Lord. He is not somebody who, who's begging and hanging his harps on the willow. And regardless of what you will read about him later, the writer wanted you to know from the very outset of the presentation. That this man is a Gileadite, 
Don't call him anything else but a Gileadite. And don't call him weak. Don't feel sorry for him. No, I'm, he's a mighty man. His situation might tell you like he is not or might give you some idea in your mind that he may not be. But don't get it twisted. Tell somebody, don't get it twisted. He's a mighty man of valor. But in the same breath, he says of him that he was a son of a harlot. So in one, in the same one, in the same breath, he's saying he's a Gileadite and a man of valor. But in the same breath, he is saying that he is a son of a whore. Son of a harlot. Can you imagine having to live with that introduction all the days of your life? This is Andrew Henry, a wonderful preacher and a son of a whore. Can you imagine being introduced that way? Oh, have you met him? Oh, what a mighty man. He's a great man. This is Minister Cliff. Yes, a great preacher, but he's a son of a whore. Not except in the same breath. Can you imagine having to live with that distinction? Can you imagine having that pain and the shame of having to live that way all the days of your life? As a matter of fact, he is dead and gone and we're still saying, Jephthah, a mighty man of valor, the son of a whore. Nevertheless, tell somebody, nevertheless. Your shame and your pain does not have to become your eternal epitaph. Your shame and your pain doesn't have to mar your purpose. Now, oh Lord, your shame and your pain don't have to make you put your head like an ostrich in a hole. Come on, tell somebody. Somebody needs help today. Shake somebody and say your pain and your shame don't have to be your eternal epitaph. For, for, for it isn't how the horse begins the race. It's not how the horse comes out at the, shoot, the shot of the gun. Because you could come out running fast and still end up last. For the end of the thing is better than the beginning of a thing. It's not how you start the race. Let no one characterize you as a failure because you didn't start well. But tell them, wait till you see me at the end. Come on, shake somebody, help somebody. Look at somebody and tell them, finish well. Finish well, finish well. Come on, look at somebody else and say, finish well. It's not how you start, it's how you what if, what if, what if Thomas Edison had believed in failure? We would sit, we'll still be living in darkness. What if Henry Ford had given up? We would still be riding on horses. What if Alexander Graham Bell had bought into the rhetoric? We'll be setting signals and reading the sun and Shooting spears. What if they had listened to people's negativity? What if you had listened to when they said about you that you were you weren't planned? What if they believed that you were a mistake? Talk to me a little, somebody. What if you believe what they said about you that you'll never make it in God? But if you believe what they said that you're going to die in your sin and die on drugs and what if, what if, what if, what if, tell somebody what if, what if, what if. What if you had believed and you wouldn't be here today. The reason why you're here today and you have a praise is because you believe beyond what you can see. Come on, you believed beyond what your eyes 
can behold. You believe that all things are possible if you're Lord. I believe that all things are possible. I don't know about you, but I believe. I believe they used to call me a big teeth, ox teeth boy. They used to say that I'm going to sell bottles for a living when I was home. They used to say that I was dumb as a doorknob and I could not learn. I, I remember those things. What if I had believed those things? Then I wouldn't be here today. I, I wouldn't be a double master. I wouldn't be an administrator. I wouldn't be a pastor. I wouldn't be a leader. I, where would I be if, had I believed characterization? But I believe that all things are possible. Come on, tell somebody, do you believe all things are possible? Do you believe all things are possible? Do you believe that all things are? Listen, anyone who has achieved anything great, anything at all great, anyone who has changed the world at some point, had made a choice along the way. They made a choice. They made a choice that they will accept the failures and not rise up. If you're going to go beyond and reach your dreams, you're going to first have to accept your failures. Greatness is not achieved Unless, you, unless it comes out of failure. Can I slow it down? Great things cannot be accomplished unless you've been through some failure. In Jamaica, we have a saying that said, we try, try, and try, and try again. And when you have failed, Try and try and try again. Failure is not the end. Failures are actually the steps that lead to your success. Tell somebody, I will not die in my failures. James 1, 2 said, count it all joy. My brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, can you imagine James is saying that I should be happy when I'm trialed? I should be happy when I'm in a plight. In other words, Jephthah should be, should, have be, should be happy that he was labeled a son of a whore. Because you can't get any worse than that. You can't get any worse than that. The only way from that point is up. James said, count it joy. Rejoice in the fact that you are at the bottom. Because it's only up that I can go. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various times. That means not only one type of trial, not only two type of trial, not only three, but you're going to have all kinds of trials. And don't let your trial cause you to hang your heart. Don't let your trial cause you to quit. Don't let your trial cause you to give up. But in the midst of your trial, James was saying, you should have a joy, an, an elation that, that, that from here, the only thing that I have to do is to go up. And he said, as long as God is with me, my up is an inevitability. I will never stay here as long as God is with me. As long as I can rejoice in the Lord and be all full happy that where I am, I know I will not stay because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And where he leads me, I will go. And I know he'll not leave me in the pit. At some point, he's going to pull me out. Peter said in Peter 1, 6, he said, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while. If necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. You're grieved by many trials. You're down. But it's that in it you got to rejoice. You got to be able to find happiness in the midst of your sadness. You got to be able to find happiness in the midst of your trials. But preacher, how can I do that? The joy of the Lord has to be your strength. When, when hope is dashed, when everything is lost, you got to grab hold of the Lord. He said, I got to be joyous. It is quite 
or near impossible to find joy in absolute sorrow. When you face the reality and people could say what they want, but when you're in a situation, that's when you, oh, that is when and only when you know the severity of where you are and what is happening. Somebody can look at the outside and say, go on brother and be have peace in the Lord. But when you're about to be evicted, go in the Lord and have peace can't help you. When you need the next bread for your children who are crying, go my brother in the name of the Lord can't help the brother. But he said, rejoice in it because God is there. And he knows what you need even before you ask, Lord. He knows that you're in need. He knows that you're in trial. But he wants to see how you're going to react in your, in your turbulent state. How will you react? How are you going to react to a turbulent situation? Are you going to hang your head? Are you going to hang your arms? Are you going to say, I know the Lord has make a way. Are you going to sit down and say, I'm going to die? I said, I'm not going to die in valleys. I know the Lord will make a way. I'm not going to die here and drown out in the sea. I know the Lord will make a way. I'm not going to be dead on drugs. I know the Lord will make a way. I know I feel rejected and suicidal. But I know the Lord somehow will make a way. Shout, Lord, you're going to make a way. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, 12, he said, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Rejoice in hope. As long as you have hope, you're not a failure. As long as you have hope, you're not a failure. As long as you have hope, you're not a failure. People who commit suicide are people who are, have lost hope. As long as you have hope, what do I have to hope in? Hope in the Lord. It's easier said than that. Just try it. Just try it. If you feel that it's just words, just try it. And if you try it, you'll see that the Lord has never forsaken his own. The Lord has never left his own. David said, from I was young, and now that I'm old, I have never. Somebody say never. Somebody say never. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. This is important. You, this is important. He said, I've never seen him forsaken, and I've never seen his children hungry. So, so he, he used the spiritual and he also used the natural. Forsaken speaks to that he always has God with him. So he's not forsaken. So as I've never seen him forsaken, that means God is always with his people. He might not manifest himself when you want him to manifest himself. But that doesn't mean that he's not there. Look at somebody and say, God is still here. God is. He might not answer when you pray, but, but, but God is still there. Paul said, you got to have hope. Somebody say, hope, 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 hope. You got to have hope. He might not might give you what you need at the moment, but he is still there. But in a matter of time, David used a natural, and he said, I've never seen him forsaken, nor his seed begging bread, because God will always make a way. Somebody say, always, somebody say, always. I'm not preaching just from a theological perspective. I'm preaching from experience. I'm preaching as a kid who had nothing. A kid who suffered. A kid who had no mother, no father available. A kid who grew up in the street. A kid who did not have anything. But the Lord made a way somehow. Somehow he made a way. Somehow he put food on the table. Somehow God made a way. You might not die. You might have doubt, but I have no doubt. I'm not preaching as an intellectual. I'm preaching as somebody who God made a way for. When it seemed like there was no way, God made a way. Somebody said God made a way. God made a way for me. He fed me when I was hungry. He cared for me when I was lonely. He lifted me up when I was sad. He made a way. Shout him made a way. He made a way. See, some of you don't got no praise because you don't think God has made a way because you have not had an experience with God. But for some of us who have had an experience with God, I know it's just a matter of time. I know it's just a matter of time. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. 
And the Bible tells us that Jephthah was the illit- illegitimate child of Gilead. And Gilead, as I aforementioned, was, I believe, was a leader of the city of Gilead. Why? This is why his name was on it. He was either a leader or the son or the son's son of a previous leader. For the name, he bore the name of the city. And normally you're honored in the ancient world with the name of a city if you are the valiant one. Jephthah was born under Gilead. A man with wealth. A man with all the fandangles that we ever dreamed of. But the Bible said that Jephthah or Gilead it was a promiscuous guy. He, because of his affluence, really frequent the other side of the tracks. Because you see, the prostitute don't dwell on the good side of the tracks. They always dwell on the other side of the tracks. And so you'd always visit the other side of the tracks. He visited so much that one day, one of the prostitutes says, I'm with child. I commend Jephthah because many of you would condemn him, but Gilead, I commend Gilead. Sorry, I commend Gilead because Gilead could have denied it. Gilead could have said, that ain't my child, but Gilead confessed to what he did. Some of us need to confess to what we're doing. Y'all ain't talking to me. And so, and so Jephthah was born on the other side of the tracks. And when you're born on the other side of the tracks, you don't seem to fit in on the other side. I know that. I know that. I tell you the story all the time about, about when I came to Canada. I lived, I lived in Place Benoit, not too far from here. And on the other side of the highway, the other side of the tracks, there, 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 there were, the Jews all lived there. And, and when I was coming up, I, I had this high school crush. On a girl who lived on the other side of the tracks. And, 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 and I, I, I'm from the other side of the track, but I, I, I couldn't talk to her. So we got on the bus and, and we would ride to school. And I would look at her. She would sit on the other side of the bus. And I would sit on the other side of the bus. And it was an awful feeling because you, 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 have, this, you have this crush. You have this desire to know. But you dare not cross the line. Because you're from the other side of the track. Well, well, I'm sorry. And, and so I remember that. So when God is dealing with me and talking to me about Jephthah, I understand what he must have felt. I remember I used to roll on my bike and I used to ride over to the other side of the track. Don't you know when you ride over the other side, before long the police is coming. <laughs> and they say, what you doing over here? You don't live over here. You live on the other side of the track. Kindly swing back over to the other side. So I know the feeling of being from the other side of the track. Lord, I wish I The mother for taking in that child. Lord, she must have been a strong woman. She taking in that child. She took in this child that's from a harlot, and he's living with these other brothers. But the other brother used to mock him and say, what are you, you, you ain't no, you ain't no one of us. You ain't one of us. You, you're, you're a half-breed. It is hard to be criticized. It is hard not only to criticize, but Jephthah had to grow up under criticism under a stigma. Can you imagine if your trial is not only for one year, but two year or three year or four year or ten year? He had to live this trial. He had to live the distinction that he is a son of a whore. Lord, I'm all by myself in this place. He had to live the distinction, but Jephthah somehow inside of him, he was going through. But one thing that, that, that the writer failed to mention, and it's a powerful thing, the writer never mentioned until he got to the second chapter, that Jephthah had a relationship with God. So as opposed to fighting, Jephthah prayed. As opposed, as opposed to arguing, Jephthah Talk to the Lord. See, when you're in your loneliness, when you're in your trial, when you're in your circumstances, it's not a time to freak out. Lord, I wish I had. It's not a time to freak out. It's not a time to argue. It's not a time to fuss. It's a time to pray. 
Tell somebody it's a time to pray. It's a time to pray. And, and, and Jephthah had a relationship with God. So whatever they would say to him would just drip right off. Whatever they would say would just drip right off. Whatever the arrows would come, it would just slide right off. Whatever the circumstance would come, it would just slip right off. Whatever the, the storms would come, it would just blow right over. Whatever the fire would come upon, it would never penetrate his feet. Because Jephthah was in relationship with God. Are you in relationship with God? Are you at a place where you can stay in your fire? Stay in the flood? Stay in your situation? Take everything that's being thrown at you and say, I know somehow the Lord is going to make a way. Can you say, I trust in God and in only shall I serve? Can you put your trust in God and believe that he's a keeper and he's a promise keeper? Jephthah had a relationship with God and in case you didn't realize he's one of the clouds of witnesses telling you and I that it doesn't matter what comes your way as long as you have a stable relationship with God Lord I look at y'all ain't saying nothing as long as you keep praying as long as you keep reaching out as long as you keep holding on to the hollow part as long as you say, Lord I will not let go until you bless me there is a way made for you there's a covering for you God has made a way for you you don't have to worry about your situation now it's just a matter of time God has made a way for you shout thank you Jesus come on shout thank you Jesus it was so for Jephthah until his his mother and father died when his mother and father died the real nastiness come out I didn't know that I was so disliked until my mama died when my mama died then all the enemies came out at me Everybody who had anything to say about me, the minute mom died, everybody had some comment. Jephthah, mom and father died. And when they died, his brothers rose to the occasion. Some people are just waiting for your security to move out of the way. <laughs> They're just waiting for the hedge to be kind of moved. They're just waiting for an opportunity. Lord, I'm, I'm all by myself today, but the devil's coming out of you anyways. People are waiting for the opportunity to, to strike you. Ah, uh, but when the opportunity comes, they jumped on Jephthah. They smote him. They said all manner of evil about him. He said, you have no inheritance here. You don't belong here. Get out of here. Get out of this city. Get out. We don't want you. You have nothing to get. They drove him out. But in your driving out, it's a man's. Hatred that drives you out, but it's God's plan to remove you. A man's plan to drive you out, but God has a plan to take you out. Because God said, I got to put you in a place where I can get you ready. I'm all by myself here. And so Jephthah, Lord, can I finish the story? Jephthah, Jephthah was driven out and he ran away and he went to a land called Todd. When he got to the land of, called Todd, the Bible said, Stragglers, vain men, and I'm trying to think of all the interpretation I've read, scoundrels joined themselves to him. Scoundrels come to you. Sometimes the people that are around you, the people that are around you, people don't always like the people that are around you. But the reason why God have them, you around them, is so that you can be a light to them. And so God will put you in a situation where you might not like, but it's to his glory and his honor. Lord, I wish I had some help here. He sent him to the land of thought. And every straggler, you see the church, we live in too much of a pristine church. We live in a luxury church. We don't, we don't mix it up with, with drug addicts. And we don't mix it up with people who are suicidal. We don't mix it up with people who are alcoholics. We're just locked away in our, in our little pretty church. And we go to church. Yeah, but God don't want you in the pretty church. God wants to send you down to St. Catherine Street. He wants to send you where the whoremongers are. The drug addicts are. Because that's where God is going to get his glory. He said he, he went down to... Todd, and when he, he was down in Todd, all the disenfranchised men joined themselves to him. 
And when they joined himself to him, you would think that he would become just like them. But that's where his gift will make room for him. He said, the gift that you have don't always work when you're at one place. But when God moves you to the right place, that's when the real gift inside of you comes out. Lord, Lord, I wish I had some people here. That's when the real gift start to move. Job said, but he knoweth the way that I take. He said, when he has tried me, he said, I shall come out like pure gold. But you can't come out like pure gold unless you've been in a place of fire. You got to be in a place of Todd. You got to get to a place called Todd. A place of degradation. A place of hardship. A place of tribulation. A place of trial. Where God can put you through it. So that in it you can build some muscles. You can build some spiritual muscles. You can say, I know, I know. If I stay in it a little longer. When I come out. I shall be as pure gold. I, I wish I had some help in this place. You see, you have to go through your trials yes. but your abasement must become your encouragement Amen. if you've never been abased you'll never rise up but if you're not encouraged in your abasement you'll never get up Amen. your abasement must be your encouragement I'm all by myself in this place here you, 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 Lord, help me, Jesus. When you're down in the mire, that's when you got to be encouraged. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord. When nothing around you seems like it's working, you're around straddlers, but you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. You're trying to be example, but everybody's living at that. You say, you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. You're tempted and you're tried, but you got to encourage yourself. You feel like bidding up and become a drug addict, but you got to encourage yourself. You feel like throwing in the towel, but you got to encourage yourself. Tap your neighbor and say, wake up, neighbor. It's time for you to encourage yourself in the Lord. Shout, I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. Your exile is the launching pad for your destiny. Your exile is your launching pad for your destiny. Jephthah was in exile. But while he was in exile, he was building strength. While he was in exile, God was preparing him. So that when he's ready, he can launch him. While he's in exile, you would think that he's down to nothing. But he's there building power to fight the enemy. You didn't think that he would be your strength to overcome your enemy. So you toss them out. But when he's in, the, in exile, God is building him up. Ah, uh, you're in your exile situation, but don't let your exile situation get the best of you. This is the time when you gotta get your strength. This is the time when you gotta encourage. Lord, I wish I had some help. This is the time when you gotta encourage yourself in the Lord. This is the time when you gotta say, "I shall not die." but I shall live. Come on, somebody. I know somebody's going through some hard time, but you got to encourage yourself. You're going through an exile season, but weeping may not endure for a night. It only endure for a night. Joy is coming in the morning. I know you feel sad. I know you feel sorrowful, but your help is on the way. Your help is on the way. Your help is on the way. Somebody shout, my help. Say, my help is on the way. Listen, 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 listen to, listen to Lucius Seneca. Lucius Seneca quoted, said, Lucius Seneca said, a gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trial. A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trial. You cannot be great without trial. You, you cannot, you cannot be successful unless you have lost a lot. You cannot love until you've been heartbroken. You cannot be strong unless you were weak. Come on. But, 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 but you have to understand it is a part of the process. It's a part of the journey, Lord. I wish I had some. It's a part of the journey. You're a gem, but you got to go through some friction. 
You got to go through some friction. You got to go through some curbing. You got to go through some scratching. You got to you gotta go through some things. Don't, when you're going through it, that's not the time to quit. It is not the time to quit when you're going through your friction. Jephthah did not quit. Jephthah was in Todd. He realized while he was talking to God that this was a plan of God. When are you going to realize that your situation is a plan of God? He realized that it was the plan of God. Help me, Holy Ghost. He realized that he needed to be in this situation. And so he took the opportunity to build some muscle. He took the opportunity to trust in God and believe on his promises. He took the opportunity to hold on. He said, Lord, I'm not going to let go. Use me and don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. He said to the Lord that if you pull me out, Lord, I'll be your strength. I'll be the one you can use. He said, Lord, I believe on that hill called Golgotha. I believe on that old rugged cross. I believe on that man named Jesus. It doesn't matter what situation Jephthah was in. His belief system catapulted him. And his mind was already out of the situation before he physiologically got out. I want to tell somebody in this house, you might be physically in a bind. You might be physically in a trial. You might be physically in a circumstance. But if you're praise God, and if you trust God you lift your mind and your mind will transcend your situation and if your mind can perceive it you can absolutely receive it and if you cannot perceive it you'll never be able to receive it Jephthah had a perceptive mind he said for sure I know the Lord is able do you have somebody here that know the Lord is able do you know that the Lord is able do you, listen do you know that the Lord is able do you know that the Lord is able? I know the Lord is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. I know. Somebody say, I know. Somebody say, I know. So the Lord said, Psalms 84. Before I left my office, and some of talked about going through the valley of Baker. You're going through the valleys of Baker. You're walking through two mountains, and you're in a valley. You're down in the middle of the valley. Jephthah was down in the middle. Dry bones are in the valley. Dead things are in the valley. Ravens are in the valley. I'm all by myself. Dead animals are in the valley, but I find that I'm in the valley. But I know I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you don't have any faith in this place. I know the Lord. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no ill. Why? 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 For you are with me. And as long as God is with me, I shall come out. As long as God is with me, I'm going to make it out. As long as God is with me, no devil in hell can stop me. I shall be more than a conqueror. Jephthah was in Todd. And Israel got in a war with the Ammonites. And you are the rejected. You're the sore thumb. You're the black sheep. You're the no good. Last time we saw you, you were scrawny. Some way, somehow, word got back. You see, if the people of Gilead would never have come for Jephthah if they had not heard of the stories of his growth. They would have never found him if, if they did not hear that he was thriving, that he took those disenfranchised men and turned them around. They went from drug addict to warriors. They went from thieves to citizens. Lord, I'm all about myself in this place. The devil can't stop me anyhow. I'm ready to preach the devil out of everybody. They, 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 they went from nothingness 
They went, and you know, I take this jacket off, devil's coming out for sure. <laughs> they, they went, those men went from nothingness, cast out, rejected, to men of strength, power, men with consciousness, men that's ready to die for their belief. I'm all by myself. They heard that a little army was formed down in Todd. That Todd was now secured. Todd was a place for drunkards. But now Todd is a high class city. Todd was a place where nobody would pass through after 9 o'clock. But now it's safe to walk through Todd at any time. Why? Because Jephthah is in Todd. I'm all by myself. You are there. Uh, when they would reject you, nobody would talk to you. But all of a sudden, everybody want to be in your company. Oh uh, God, I heard that the men went down to Todd to visit Jephthah. They said, Jephthah, Jephthah, we are in trouble. I love Jephthah's reaction. He said, why you come talk to me now? You rejected me. You rejected me. Oh, the stone which the builder rejected has become the head of the corner. Now you need me to fight for you. Jephthah said, well, I ain't fighting for you. You can't put me in the back. If you're going to put me in a fight, I've got to be the leader. Because when I come, I'm coming with the Holy Ghost. I'm coming with the same power that blew me out of my degradation. The same power that pulled me out of my stigma. I was a war son, but now my son of God. I'm all by myself. I was rejected. Now I'm exalted. I was set aside. Now I'm up front. I was weak, but now I'm strong. I was poor, but now I'm rich. Out come the devil. Out come the devil. Out come the devil. I'm rich. I've got power. I've got Jesus. Shout, I've got Jesus. Powerful. He says, if you're going to make me king or lead of the battle, I've got to be the captain. After all that God has done for me, you think I'm going to subject myself to your poor behavior? My brothers betrayed me and kicked me out. And you want me to come back as a follower? The devil is a liar. If I come back, I've got to be the leader. It would seem arrogant to a lot of people. But he wasn't speaking from the position of arrogance. He was speaking from the position of deliverance. You see, when you speak from the position of deliverance, you know, you know who delivered you. You know where you're coming from. You know if it were not for the Lord who were by your side. Where would you be? You, you, you understand? Listen, you better open up your ears and listen to what God has to say to you. You know that if it were not for the Lord who brought you here, you would have been a crackhead dead somewhere underneath us somewhere. But with God, with God in this vessel, God, it was God that spoke through Jephthah. It was God that spoke through him. God always want to be the captain of the host. So he says, he be the leader. But Jephthah is no fool. You got to be careful who you subject yourself to. Lest they change the decision halfway through. People will use you and then throw you aside. <laughs> Jephthah says, I know you said I'll be the captain. But when the battle is over and I have brought you victory... Will I still be captain? Listen, if I come, you ain't sending me back to Todd. I'm going to have Todd and Gilead. And when I want all of Israel. I'll shout help Jesus here. You ain't going to put me in no situation after that God has raised me up to deliver you. You're going to push me in the back? No, tell the devil it ain't going to happen no more. I once was lost, but now I'm found. The light of the world is Jesus. Once I came into the light, I'm not going back. Tell the devil I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Look, open up your mouth. I'm not going back. The Bible said, a Jephthah 
sent word. I love Jephthah because he's so confident. He sent word to the Ammonites. What have I done to you? What have I done to you? Eh? Do you like that? He didn't say, what have we done? What have I? See, he was speaking from the position of God. I know that one's tough for you. He was speaking in the first person singular. He was speaking as God. Because God was in him. In full operation. So he says, what have I done? To you. And he says, well, you know, when you pass through, you pass through a land, you destroy it. And he said, I did, we, I, we did not touch you. We, we did not touch you. We, we did not touch you. You just don't like it that we are prospering. People don't like it when you're prospering in God. Lord, I, I'm almost done here. People don't like it when you prosper. Your, your, your neighbor will be your best friend until you start to prosper. Your brother, your sister, even your kinfolks will love you when you're poor. And when you come to church, when you're just a little strawny brother in the back, everybody love you until God exalts you. And the minute God exalts you, they have all kinds of things to say about you. Oh, you're cocky. Oh, you're arrogant. Oh, you're full of yourself. You ain't, Lord. Everybody got something negative. Everybody's ready to tear you down. Everybody's ready to throw you aside. Everybody's ready. But they could say whatever they want. As long as I've got God with me. Lift up those hands for a minute and say, thank you, Jesus. I'm almost, I'm just say, thank you, Jesus. Jephthah said something down the top. Jephthah, he, I know it cost him in the end, but Jephthah said, he said, Lord, give me this valley. And the first thing that comes out of my house, first thing that came out of my house to meet me, I'm going to offer it as a sacrifice. I ain't going down there. I ain't, no, no, no. I'm not going back. Tell, I ain't going back. I ain't going back. He said, he said to the Lord, I'm making a covenant with you. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody in this room about making, watch this now, a doable covenant. Don't make a covenant that you can't keep. Jephthah made a covenant and it broke his heart and kept the covenant. God wants some, he said, I want to give you victory. But you got to make a covenant with me. Victory shall be yours. Victory shall. That's in the 12th chapter you find Jephthah's covenant. He's, victory shall be yours. If you make a covenant with me. I want to make a covenant with you. He said, Lord, give me the victory. God said, I'll give it to you. But make the covenant. Somebody is in the land of Tad. Somebody is in the land of Tad. It feels like the valleys of Baker. It feels like the shadow of death. But God said, I have you there training you. For the battle. He said the battle is not yours. It belongs to me. But I'm training you to fight. He said when you come out. You're going to meet your enemies. I will give you the victory. But you're going to have to make a covenant. God is a God of covenants. God wants to give us the victory. But what will you give God in return? 
Somebody's holding out on God. Somebody's holding out on God. Somebody's holding out on God. So, Lord, I'm all by myself here. Somebody's holding out on God. Gotta make that covenant with Him. Somebody gotta make a covenant with Him. Somebody gotta make a covenant with Him. Somebody gotta, you got to have that victory. Life is going in a cyclical way going in a cyclical way. It's going, you thought you were victorious, but you're back again. You thought you were out, but you're back in. Somebody got to make a covenant with God. Somebody got to make a covenant with God. It doesn't matter. It's clear today that it doesn't matter where you came from. It's not how you started this race. I don't care if you're a daughter or a son of a harlot. God don't care. You're hill here. As long as you're here, it was God that brought you here. It was his plan to bring you here. And now that you're here, he wants the purpose to come out of you. Will you hear him today? Will you hear his voice? 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 Will you? Evangelist. Jephthah was in a bad situation. His mom was dead. His dad was dead. He was thrown out of his hometown without a dollar. When you saw him again, he was more than a Will you make that covenant with God? Will you make that covenant with God? When I come out, 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 when I come out. I'm struggling now, but when I come out, things are hard now, but when I come out, I'm in hell now, but when I come out, I'm in sorrow now, but when I come out, when I come out, I shall be, I shall be, as pure gold. Do you believe you shall be like pure gold? Lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. God is telling somebody, no matter where you are, I got a plan for you. I got a plan for you, said God. Plan to prosper you keep you in good health even as your soul prosper God said I want to see it to fruition I, I watch over my word God says I watch over my word to accomplish it and whatever I've said about you or to you I watch over my word to accomplish it there's a promise on your life there's a promise on your life there's a promise on your life there's a promise on your life. There's a promise on your life. There's a promise on your life. Come on, lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. Lift up your voices. There's a promise on your life. There's a promise on your life. Some of you don't get it because you, you don't see how it's applicable to you, but there's a promise on your life. There's a promise on your life. There's a promise on your life. I know hard times will discombobulate your mind, could cloud your thinking, but there's a promise on your life. There's a promise. When you come out, when you come out, when you come out, when you come out. Keep those hands up, come on. When you come out, when you come out, when you come out, 
when you come out. Listen, this church ain't a jumping church. It's a word-based church. We love to jump too much, but you got to get God's word. Quit the jumping and begin to learn. When you come out. It's a word-based place. When you come out of this place, even today, you, you're coming out learning that. You're not coming out jumping. And when somebody asks you, what have you learned? You have nothing to say but a jump. You're coming out saying, I might be in the valley of Todd. But I know when I come out. Lift up those hands. Come on, Sammy. Lift up your voice. Come on. Gonna, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Come on. See, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Open up your mouth. I'm coming out. I'm coming out of my breath. I'm coming out of Todd. 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 I'm coming out. 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 I'm not staying here. I'm some way the Lord is gonna make a way. I'm coming out. I'm struggling, but I'm coming out. I'm in hardship, but I'm coming out. I feel overwhelmed, but I'm coming out. I know, I know I'm rejected, but I'm coming out. I know I got a stigma on my name, but I'm still coming out. I know I'm a son of a whore, but I'm still coming out. I am stand up, stand up everywhere. Stand in this house. Stand this house. Lift up your head. Lift up your head. I'm coming out. Lord Jesus, we exalt you, we glorify you, O oh God, and we give you praise. Lord Jesus Christ, you are worthy of all honor and glory. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, O oh God, for this word, Lord Jesus, that you've given, O oh God, to, O oh God, your manservant, O oh God, to pour into our spirits today, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that we have all received this word, Lord Jesus, to use it as a stepping stone, O oh God, to get to that place which you have already predetermined for our lives, O oh God, for you've already, O oh God, called us, O oh God, unto higher heights and deeper depths. Lord, we thank you for the man of God, Lord Jesus, who has labored to give us this word, oh God, for this day, Lord Jesus, for our lives, for this situation, for every situation that we are in, even right now, Lord God, for your word is an on-time word, Lord Jesus. Your word, oh God, comes to deliver, oh God. Your word comes to heal, Lord Jesus, and it comes to set free. So we thank you, Jesus, oh God, for this word, Lord. We pray that, Lord God, as we close, oh God, this service Lord Jesus, that we continue to meditate upon the word that you have brought forth, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, in your holy and matchless name, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. No retreat. No retreat. No retreat. God bless you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Mm -hmm.